Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. I present to you three easy last minute DIY gifts or gift ideas. As the name suggests, they're quite easy to make. They're perfect little gifts for your friends and family, your colleagues, teachers, anyone really. And you know what? They don't have to be Christmas themed. You can make these as little gifts throughout the whole year. I'm going to do a tutorial on all of them. We'll talk about presentation. We'll talk about all the little details. We are making set of three mini book Christmas tree ornaments, pocket envelope treat bag and handbag accordion mini album. Just look at this. All right, let's begin. Merry Christmas. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Oh my, what is this? This is idea number one, set of three mini book Christmas tree ornaments. Beautifully presented in this upcycled box, which used to be a sunglasses box. I will talk about this and general presentation of gifts just a little bit later on. But for now, I say let's get cracking on making these beauties. As usual, you can go about this project many different ways, but I'm going to tell you what I did on mine. And what I have here is just some cardstock that I did a whole lot of things to. I was just having a play. First, I started with gluing down some book pages. Then I added a little bit of watercolor, followed by some scribbles, and then some painting and some mark making. And by that, I mean I was using things like this, lids and all sorts of things that I can find in my mark, mark making little box over here. Things like this, you can see, you know, all those effects. I did some paint splatters and I added some glitter. It looks uh, quite messy and not that great, but when you cut it up into little sections and little pieces like I did here, it looks a whole lot better and it makes a lot more sense. So that's actually what my covers are made from, you can see here. You don't have to go to the, I was just having a little bit of fun, of course you don't have to go to these lengths, you can just simply paint a little bit of cardstock with in just one color or you can just use whatever you have on hand. This is just an option. I, when I did this, I wasn't sure where it actually is going, but there we have it. The next thing I did is prepare two little pieces from my front cover and my back cover. And these measure one and a half inches by two inches. You, you can choose, of course, any size. You can make them large like this. You can make them tiny, tiny. So size really doesn't matter. It's whatever you choose. And I chose one and a half by two, just so I have that. Uh, I didn't want a square. I wanted a rectangle. And that's what I've got here. So I have my cover ready. And as I didn't do anything on the inside, I mean, you can go ahead and, and cover the whole inside as well, but I'm just going to paint. Uh, I'm not painting, am I? I'm going to ink the edges over here just to kind of de define those edges and make them look nice and finished. Okay, so there's the cover. This is going to be my front. This is going to be my back. And now I need pages for the inside. And I prepared here just four pages. Uh, the the little mini books that I have here have more pages, but just for the purpose of this video, I've got four little pages. This is handmade paper and I kind of assembled it that way. And it's exactly the same size as my cover to make it nice and simple. I cut it down to exactly one and a half by two inches. And now I'm just going to do this. So I am essentially making it into a little book just like that. So first I'm going to, this is probably too thick to punch holes through all at this uh, one time or all at the same time. So what we're going to do is just grab the actual cover and I'm going to punch three holes, just kind of eyeballing it somewhere in the middle and then somewhere over here. I'll show you a bit closer. I know you can't see. And then again here are three holes all in the same line. And of course that didn't go all the way through on the one underneath because it's way too thick. So, but you know, I can already see where I, I need to, there we go. And now I'm just making those holes. Okay. Uh, you could just do one hole up here at the top and then have, you know, you don't have to do three, you can do two. As long as you have one that's nearing this edge, you don't want to have one hole here and another one here and then your thing is hanging by a thread going from the middle and then it's hanging like this. I hope it makes sense what I'm saying. 
Next thing, get your little pages that you've prepared and line them up with perhaps the front cover. We want all of our holes to align. So I'm just going to line it up here with my front cover and then go through my holes that I already made and just it's again probably not going to go through all of the little pages I have underneath. See that? But I can see where the markings are. Oh, nearly went through all of them. I'm going to get something soft underneath. You can use a magazine as long as you don't mind poking some holes through it. I'm using a mouse pad and there we have it. Really simple and quick process and now what's going to happen is all of the holes are going to be aligned through our covers and the inside pages and now you guessed it we're going to put some rings through those holes use whatever you have i'm using these uh, jump rings that are quite large for jump rings i guess but uh, i wish i had something larger but i don't so i'm just going to use what i have and now this is a tedious process, so I'm going to hurry this along. You could try, you know, depending on the width of your hole, you know, you can try and put it all, all on there all at once. Or what I kind of have to do, because the holes are small and the rings are small, I kind of have to do it this way, just one by one. I do one, then I do the next one, and then I do the third one. All right, so there's my first little jump ring through that first hole. And before I close the jump ring, I'm going to pop a little... Christmas bell on there and there we have it so you could just have one ring perhaps it can be a little bit higher up the top and then that can be your little booklet you don't have to put three rings on there like I said before but anyway I'm going to pop these two on and I'll be right back and here we have it a cute little booklet and it looks pretty cute without any embellishing but I'm going to go ahead and just pop a little something fun on the front cover I prepared some little pieces earlier just to speed this process up. These are all die cuts and off we go. And here we go, a little bit of an embellishment there at the front. Everything looks really rich, really busy because of this background. So there isn't much that I have to do, but that would look like that gold would look amazing on this thread. I mean, there's, this can go endless you know, with the embellishing possibilities and it doesn't have to be Christmas themed as you can see totally up to you the very last thing we need to do is add a little bit of string and I was just thinking as I was gluing these little pieces on that I didn't mention how would you what what would be the purpose of this little book so let's say first this is just an example I mean obviously the purpose is for the book to hang off a Christmas tree it doesn't have to but you know let's say for example you have four family members each family and you know we have four pages in here so each family member can write a message Merry Christmas to Auntie Mary from, you know, whatever. You could have a little photo, you know, a tiny little photo on the back here. I mean, there's just so many ways that this can go. There's so many ways that you can use it. All right, so the way I'm tying the knot is I've popped it through like this, and now I'm going to do this. Because I don't want a loose knot, I want that knot to be all the way. You'll see what I mean in a moment. I'm just pushing it all the way to that jump ring. So it looks like that. We, we want the knot to be neat. And then of course to finish it off, we tie a knot here. And there we have it, a little mini book Christmas tree ornament. I think it's really quite cute and there's a potential for messages and, and little photos and perhaps little memories from Christmas that year for example maybe you can put Christmas 2022 on the cover right and now presentation so first of all of course it doesn't have to be a set of three I just went a little bit crazy making them well not really I only made the three so and you can see the way that I embellished these ones only one of them is actually Christmas themed. And all I did is, like I said, sunglasses box. Now, look at all of these boxes. These are just some of the boxes from my stash. I didn't purchase these glasses. When people, of, of, oftentimes, I should say, when people purchase glasses from the optometrists, they will say no to the box, just like with shoes. When I purchase shoes, I always say, no, I don't want the box. And then the optometrists get rid of the boxes. They throw them in the recycling or whatever. So if you go to your local optometrist and you ask them to keep some boxes for you, they probably will. 
and they are really cool boxes. Look at this box. I know, isn't it cool? I need to take this. I didn't uh, decorate the bottom, but I know that I need to. And then all that I did is laid some cardstock. Oh, it's beautiful cardstock, I admit. Just some gold cardstock on top to hide the brand of the sunglasses. Uh, obviously, pop this ribbon down. I made this with my little fingeries. I made a bow anyway, and then I just hid, you know, the ends of the ribbon inside with another piece of cardstock, just glued it down. You can see I didn't do the measuring very well, but anyway, it looks really beautiful, very good presentation for a present. And then over here, I filled the box up with tissue paper, all tissue paper, and popped in some little you know it would be nice if i had stars and little christmas trees but i don't so i just use these gold little bits on top of a sequin pop my little books in there just like that and what a wonderful gift it makes i mean if i got this as a gift i know that i would absolutely love it and i think this is a nice gift all year round which is probably why i only did one christmas themed i mean you know this can be a little birthday gift too but then they wouldn't be Christmas tree ornaments, would they? So you wouldn't need little hangy bits. You know, I mean, as I said, and as I always say, you can take this idea in so many different ways, but I hope that it has sparked some inspiration and some of your own ideas. All right, let's move along. Idea number two is a pocket envelope treat bag. You're not going to believe how easy and simple and quick it is to make this. I've made a tutorial on this before, but I'm going to show you really quick today. We're making a little treat bag and you can pop inside anything you want. I've got a little Christmas tag here. I've got a tea, a hot chocolate and a little spoon. It's a really, really simple here. We just have tea and a spoon and really simple, really quick and really quite impactful. So you can package it up really nicely. You can see here, I've got some cellophane scrunched up up the top here and a little bow and a little tag here that says Merry Christmas and it just looks so rich and beautiful and all it is some tea and some hot chocolate you can put in anything you want really you can make it nice and full as elaborate or as simple as you want I have done these before in a tutorial these are not not uh, Christmas themed or anything like that but today I'm going to very quickly show you how to make this you can use 12 by 12 scrapbook paper or 6 by 6 or even whatever size you have as long as it's a square that's all you need you can make tiny little ones so here we have it this is how you make one you're not gonna believe how easy this is if you haven't made one before so you're going to fold here diagonally so you have this big triangle but you have to make sure that all of your edges meet quite perfectly quite nicely just like that score that line now you're going to grab the very first top layer and pop it down and then crease this here if you want to make sure that the points are exactly aligned which really they should be but it really isn't that big of a deal if they're not perfectly aligned so uh, if you do want that you can just use a little something so this point is here at this line so this point is going to be on that same line i can see here i'm really you know what i'm really complicating this all you have to go all you have to do is just fold this down and crease so i folded it down all the way almost all the way to the edge make that crease nice and sharp you know you can go ahead and ink some edges if you wish to do so you can go ahead and round some corners like this if you wish to do so this is all optional and none of this has to be done here we go can you believe it's summer in australia and i'm wearing two two layers well three actually all right so there we have it and now all we're going to do now is pop these two sides up like so okay that's all that's happening here so usually what i do is i'll get you closer so you can see i pop my finger here in that very corner where they meet and i kind of hold it in place until i get a nice fold there and then when you're folding this down i know you can't see but there's my crease here we're going to move this up to the crease and fold that's one done and now we're doing exactly the same on the other side so there's I'm just holding that in place. I'm going to go all the way up like so. Okay. All 
Okay, that's what you have so far. And then basically what's going to happen is these go underneath and this one gets glued on top, just like that. Can you believe that that's all there is to it? So this is actually an origami method where if you fold this side as well, you have like a little drinking cup or, or people have told me. So you could do that too. You can make a little basket and fold the back part down. But I, I, I like it this way. And then you can get different effects by using, you know, uh, different types of paper or different, if you fold it a different way. Let's see how this is going to look. Or this way, right? So, you know. So if you want most of your thing to be one particular color, in my case, it's most of my thing is red, then you're starting off with that color. Or I should say with that side of your paper. So you have it on your desk and you start folding into the triangle and then this one comes down. You do all of your creasing and then once you're at this point, then you go ahead and you get a little bit of glue. You can pop a bit of glue there, pop a bit of glue there, a little bit of glue here. Close this down. Close that down and there you have it. Can you believe how easy this is? There's your little pouch and it's ready to go to be filled up with some goodies. So just to give you some ideas on this one here, I glue down some of these die cuts just to make it really special and you can't see but up there at the top as well. And then over here, this is a stamp, a stamped, you know, image that I stamped and cut out and made that into a little pocket and I popped in these tags. So these little tags, you know, sitting in that pocket and they can be pulled out. This one here, okay, it's not that special, I'll admit, but it just has a little bow there in the, in the middle. You can make it special by adding, a, what are they called, those things? Candy cane. You know, you can pop in some candy canes, do a little cellophane, do a little bow, and it's beautiful. It's perfect, like a little teacher's gift. How cool is this for a teacher's gift? And then I'll also show you this one. So I didn't package this in any cellophane, as you can see. This is the tag. And I just wanted to show you a little trick, just in case, which I'll get to in just one moment. But I just wanted to point out the bow here and little details that make it special. And then at the back, what was I planning? I was planning to glue Merry Christmas or something here at the back. Okay, so here's the little trick. Look at this. How cool, drinking chocolate. Okay, so the little trick is this. When I put my things in, because the, the pocket, the bag, or what do you want to call it, is quite large. They kind of sink all the way down. So what I did might help you out as well. You see that little bit in there? It's actually green, so it does go. But I glued down kind of like a little something that looks like this. But I left the top open. So I only glued it down on the three sides or even just the bottom. So then when I put this in, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. I can do this and tuck it in there. You see that? It's tucked in. So it's kind of sitting at the correct height. See that? That's where I want it. And it's just tucked in. You can see that there. And I did the same with the spoon. All right, let's move to idea number three. And idea number three is handbag accordion mini album. I think I saved the best idea for last. I don't know, you guys can be the judge. I'll just quickly show you what this is all about. So as you can see, it's like a little booklet that looks like a little handbag. And of course, as the title suggests, it's accordion, so it can sit up on your shelf. It can also be opened completely flat like this. And I can't really show you in a video how glorious this thing is. And it can also be presented just like this. And I don't know if I mentioned that this is easy, it can be done very quickly, you can go as crazy to, as you want with elaborating, you know, on what you do. I'll show you the details later, totally up to you, or you can make it as simple as you want. But I'm going to show you how it's done. So I'm starting off with two pieces of cardstock or cardboard. You can use packaging, you can use cereal bags, anything you have that is thicker than standard paper. It doesn't have to be crazy thick. And you can see here my measurements, five and a half by six, only because I didn't want a square, so that's why I trimmed down to five and a half, one of the sides. 
uh, you can you you can do anything you want this is again just my measurements and these are my covers so we're starting off with making the covers here and then we're going to move on to this inside part so let's just start off with one i have my piece and i prepared i want this to be my cover i want it to look like that so i am going to pop this down just glue it there and there we go just apply some glue glue it down and then i might just I just do this so it's easier for me later so i'm just folding some not doing anything perfectly but just getting some folds happening in that paper and now i'm going to trim just the corners here probably should have left a bit more space leave a little bit of space there right at the corner so we're just going to it doesn't have to be you know perfect looking and that's what we have so now choose two opposite sides to start with i might choose these two sides and it's probably easier to do this with double-sided tape i'm not even covering the whole thing with double-sided tape just pop some glue down here and now i'm going to glue these two down all right excellent that's what it's looking like so far now you can see here we've left that little bit of space so you just want to use your bone folder or butter knife or whatever to move that little piece down so this is how i do it I just move it down like that and i do that on all of the corners that's going to give you a nice neat finish i'll show you up close in a moment so you can see how i kind of push that down on both sides right there and now when this comes on top you will be able to see that we have some neat corners happening that's what we want we want as neat as possible so i go in with the glue too uh, i just don't trust the double-sided tape so there we have it pop that down pop this down and that's it look how perfectly neat that looks look at those edges and those little corners that are just absolute perfection so now we want to repeat the same process on the other board and here we have it our boards are done and this is our front and back uh, cover basically there we go and they are exactly the same size they have nice neat corners and now the next thing you're going to do is get your inside pages pop this to the side for now you will need an even number of pages my album that i've already made has eight pages one two three four all the way up to eight okay i'm not gonna count anyway so for this video i'm just gonna do six pages this time you can make a 12 you can make it four so just to demonstrate if you choose four pieces of paper this is what it's going to look like it's just going to have one little thing in there if you choose eight it has three i've chosen my papers these are six by six scrapbook papers i'm going to have to trim them down because obviously they are larger than my covers so that's another thing perhaps to keep in mind when you're chopping down your covers i knew that that's what i'm going to do so that's fine and i'm going to start off with this is going to be my back and this is going to be my front meaning for this one for example you can see how my front and my back page are the same they don't have to be but i like to choose right at the beginning so that it has some sort of a cohesion so i'm going to choose the order that my pages are going to go in so it's going to be my first one the cover one and then it's going to go in this order this is going to be my back cover i'm going to pop it to the side and i'm going to work on this might even make a little note this is my front cover and now i'm just going to measure the height of my pages so as you can see the pages are too high so i need to trim them down what i did in here you can see i trimmed my pages down so they're they're a little bit shorter than the total of my cover the total height of the cover you can make your pages exactly the same height as the cover totally up to you so what i'm going to do I, i'll turn it around so i can see better and just make a little mark 
where to cut my pages so you'll see once I cut my pages I will have a little margin here and a little margin here just like that I'll grab all of my pages and I will trim them down all in one go and here we go all of my pages are exactly the same height I'm gonna pop these to the side for now and now before I continue with the hinging I'm going to create the holes in the covers for my little handle here so I'll grab my front and back cover and I'm going to put them together like this and I want the handles here on the side so I'm going to mark where I want to punch the holes I want them evenly spaced so I'm just going to say let's say for example one here and one here just like that that one's probably a bit too far out so I want them a little bit closer maybe maybe about half a centimeter from the edge or a quarter of an inch as long as they are in the same level this one's a bit lower so that's okay I can rub that out and there we go that's what we have and now make the holes using whatever tool you have you can have maybe perhaps one of these but I have a cropper doll so I'm just going to use that all right the holes are done on the front cover and now I'm going to pop my cover my back cover underneath and you can mark through those holes where you want to uh, punch your next hole on the underneath cover or I'm just going to hold this in place and pop my cropper dial again through that same hole just like that so the holes have to be in the exact same spot if that makes sense so you want them aligned okay you can uh, go ahead and leave it as it is or you can apply some eyelets so here we go eyelets are ready now they have to go through the hole but these eyelets are a little bit too big I mean too small they can't go through the hole so I just improvise I just make that hole a little bit bigger any way that I can so I'm using one of these you can use a pencil you know as long as the eyelet can go through I'm gonna do it on all four all right eyelets are added and now I just have to set the eyelets again I'm going to use my cropper dial a subscriber sent this to me and it's I love it it just makes my life easier but in all of my years of crafting I was using this silent setter I got this off eBay and it does the same job so use whatever you have or skip this step altogether and there we go eyelets are set so my main point here is that you use what you have don't rush out buying things you can totally do this project without the eyelets it just does add a little bit of an extra special touch but it still looks fine without the eyelets in my opinion now we're going to complete the book and then I'll show you how to make this handle using this uh, wired tinsel or pipe cleaners that's all that is all right so the back cover can go away for now and here are my pages and this is what you're going to do you grab the first page that you decided and this is why I wanted to do the holes at this point so I know how far I can go with the page okay because you don't want to cover the holes you could and then poke a, another hole there I suppose but I'm just gonna go all the way up to the holes make sure everything is aligned everything is straight you don't want your page not to be completely straight so just make sure it's nice and straight and then holding it in place this is how it's going to be glued down hold it in place and fold the extra this extra here we're not trimming anything anymore fold it either all the way to the edge or leaving a little bit of space totally up to you I have folded mine nearly all the way up to the edge there's only a sliver here that's visible on the previous album I left a little bit more space there you can see so you can decide sort of if you want to go all the way to the edge or you want that little bit of space in there okay that's what we have we don't need this for now now we're going to hinge all of our pages together so we are creating this accordion effect and you can see if I show you the back it will be even better if you're using double-sided paper I'm just using single-sided so it's white at the back you can see all of that hinging all of that extras there all right so my next page that I decided will be this one here I have that fold in there and now all I'm going to do is glue this on there so I'm going to apply glue all over the hinge there we go see I've got all that glue on there and now this is gonna go 
right in there so you can you want to get it right in there so maybe we can do it this way right or you can put it on top as long as it's straight okay they meet perfectly you can see when i close there's kind of a little bit of extra there so i'm just gonna move it in place before everything is dried and then i'm gonna press down and there's our first page hinged so now what we have to do is create a hinge so basically we're just folding gluing folding gluing all right so for that for the next part i'm going to align it with this edge here so the extra is being aligned with the previous page all right see what i did there i'm going to grab my next page it's going to be this one so again i can either decide to glue it right on top of the hinge or i can go underneath so it looks like that so this is the fun that you can have making these decisions i'm deciding to glue it underneath like that and so i'm going to apply glue all in here and now again we're aligning everything perfectly and by the way if you're wondering I don't know if I mentioned the paper pad that I'm using is six and a half by six and a half. If you're using six by six, your hinges will be a lot smaller here. It's not going to be as wide and it's happening. Okay. That's what's happening. And now again, we have the extra here that needs to be folded to be exactly meeting this point here. All right. And creasing down and hoping for the best. Okay, it's like, you know, there's a little bit of room for error, but you want them to meet as perfect as you can. Now I'm going to grab my next page and either pop it on top or do it like this. The reason why I always opt for this uh, way, even though I'm hiding most of this page, unfortunately, is because the hinge hugs the edge of this paper. Okay, otherwise, if I do it this way, you know, I would have this, I don't know. I mean that's not a it can go you can do it either way you know what i'm just going to do it this way just for something different and it's easier to work with glue rather than double-sided tape because with glue you can reposition double-sided tape once you put it down it stays where you put it down so all right i'm gonna pop that on top and maneuver it into place nice and even and then smooth it down check for any glue seepage there's none excellent all right that's looking good so again and you can just keep going into oblivion with this that's why i said before you can have four pages in there you can have six eight twelve sixteen however many you just keep on adding all right this is my next page and i'm gonna glue this one in like so so i'm going to apply glue pop that all the way up to the crease and align the top and bottom edges pop this down done and then you can choose to keep going as i said or i'm going to end this is my very last page so once again we're folding this down i'm going to glue this on top of this one all right there we have it so during this process of course you want to make sure that all of your pages are facing the right way up and this is what we have so far you see how easy is this you're just hinging attaching hinging attaching that's the back that's the front and now what's going to happen is you have your front cover here that's going to be glued onto the front cover and you see this we're going to have to cut that off because of course the piece is too long and let's get rid of that all right so there's the booklet i've trimmed that back part to meet exactly with the rest of the booklet okay and now we're going to go on to gluing this to our front and back cover so i'm going to start with the front cover and i'm going to glue it somewhere around there leaving a little bit of a sliver there so all i'm going to do is apply glue all over that first piece side note if you want to go the extra mile you can see here i've added sewing so basically i've added sewing at this stage i would just take this whole piece to my sewing machine and i added sewing uh, but i'm not doing it in this tutorial but that is an option as well so you would do your sewing and then you would glue it down all right so the glue is applied and now i'm going to pop it down checking that i have enough you know on both sides perhaps it needs to move down a bit or not i think that looks pretty good all right so that's glued down we have a tiny little bit of space here and now for the back cover we're applying glue all over this end piece here glue applied 
And now what you can do, what I'm going to do, is instead of like putting this down and trying to make sure everything's aligned, I'm just going to pop this piece on top and make sure this piece is aligned with my bottom piece, with the front cover. There we go. So I'm aligning the front and back covers, and then I'm going to open it up and hope for the best. Let's see. All right. Good. Good. Perfect. Smooth that down. And there's the little book. How easy is that? So I used, as I said, six pages. Two pages are front and back cover. And then we have four pages here that create two of these inside bits. Of course, it opens, you know, all the way up. I think you already know that. So now at this stage, we go ahead and we'll apply the handles now. Why not? As I said before, I'm using pipe cleaners for my handle just because it has structure. It's not fluffy floppy like a ribbon might be but of course you can use ribbon uh, you can use twine you can use whatever you have on hand so I'm using pipe cleaners all right so I'm gonna go in here and then I'm going to twist and make it nice and secure and tight so I'm just twisting this little bottom piece all around all right here we go that's attached that's twisted all around and now I'm going to add fun stuff all this fun stuff and it's really fun because the beads can go on with minimal effort because you have that wire, you know, that's nice and strong and you can just, I mean, surprisingly so. You wouldn't think that it would be an easy process, but look at this. On go the beads. It would have been nicer if I had gold tinsel, but I don't have any gold tinsel, so I'm using red. And these green beads I'm applying on have a tiny little opening, so it's not like they're large you know, large beads or anything like that. And they still go on quite smoothly and beautifully. But they stay in place. They're not gonna, you know, flop around. So that's the design I'm going for. It's the exactly the same thing that I've done over here. So now, before you attach this to here, you have to work in reverse for your beads on this side. So I'm working in reverse. I'm starting with the same bead that I have on the end. Then we did this one and we're just gonna keep going. Okay, all of the beads are on and now you can go in this way, okay, and determine how long you want your handle to be. Do you want it little like that? You can have all beads. That would look cool, actually. You can have it long like this. Up to you, okay? I might do it like this. So again, you just fold and then you twist a couple of times, maybe three, four times. And then cut the excess off. There's that sharp point here that I've just cut off. So I move that sharp point up and then move the bead or try to so that the sharp end enters through the bead. And now I can maneuver these beads in place. And there we have handle number one. Now we're going to do the same thing at the back, follow the same thing. So I'm going to split this up, but you need to make sure that your handles are the same height and I'll show you how to do that. You don't want to have one handle that's up here and then another one down here. They have to be on the same level. Here we have it. All of the beads have been threaded on and now again we're repeating the same process as before. So I'm going to pop that in there and now I have to determine how large I want this one to be. So you can see it's larger than the first one. So I'm just going to keep moving it to the same level. And now again, finish off, twist, 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 and cut off. Move these beads into place. And look what I did. I added an extra be extra green bead. Oh, so now I'm gonna have to undo this and fix it up. All right, easily fixed. There we have it. Handles are on the same level and they are done. And now what you would do, you can go ahead and embellish the pages and you can have them completely flat when you're working on them. Of course, you can turn it around and embellish the back. I didn't do that, but I'm not going to embellish this one. I'm just going to show you what I did on this one here, just to give you some ideas. So my dilemma was the following. If it's a little handbag, you imagine that it has to be like this because you're holding it up like that. I don't know. Even though you're not actually going to use it as a handbag or anything like that. But that's why I chose not to have a directional image here. So, for example, 
This is just to demonstrate, it doesn't really go, but let's say directional writing and an image here, but then when you turn it like this, it's not right. So that's why I chose to go with something that can look good if you have it this way or if you have it this way. It goes both ways, all right? So all this is is die cuts and some cardstock. And also die cuts here, they look like metal. It's not, it's just cardstock. And I embellished it that way. So you use what you have. Most likely you're not gonna have the same thing that I have. So you just play around with whatever you have. Here I've popped a little tag, uh, a pocket and some tags in the pocket. So this pocket here, it's not actually sewn through the page. I did the sewing on this piece prior to gluing it down, okay? And then just glued the three sides down and popped some tags in. You can have photos here. You can make it really fun. This here is a belly band. It looks really rich. It's just this little postcard, kind of a journaling spot, and I glued some pieces down. Glued the little piece of an offcut, actually, one of the papers that I used in here. Glued some pieces here. It looks really rich because I have all of these little details, little gold stickers and stuff like that. But it's just a belly band. You can tuck some you know, money in there, whatever. Whatever the purpose of the gift giving is. There's a little Christmas wish list, little corner tag there or little corner pocket there. And then we turn the page again, another little pocket, no big deal. Reason for the season, popped some tags in there. You see, I don't know, just a little bit of fun. Then this here is, I made this into a pocket as well. So it's just an image of Santa and I made it into a pocket. This is a cutout from a greeting, uh, greeting card. You know, we get lots of these greeting cards and you can make also, I have tutorials on using greeting cards and making stuff with that. I'll link it below. All right, and then on this page, same, exactly same thing. I made that into a fun pocket. This is also from a greeting card. Look at that, just a cutout. How cool does that look? And that just goes in there and then just embellish the back here didn't do anything you know just really quite simple embellishing as you can see but it looks really really rich and a whole lot of fun and when people see this they think oh wow how how did you make this like how did you make this well now you know how it's so straightforward easy and there's so many possibilities with this type of thing. And of course it goes without saying, and perhaps I did say it, it doesn't have to be Christmas themed. Obviously this isn't Christmas themed. This is a project you can make throughout the whole year. Maybe these handles, perhaps I wouldn't go for like the red tinsel. I might use brown pipe cleaners or white pump pipe cleaners, right? And then, of course, if you haven't seen my previous video, you can make these button Christmas tree ornaments too. Uh, this is a video I did just recently and I'm going to link it down below. You can make one of each. You can make one little booklet like this. You can make one of these. You can pop one of these in there, make it really special. So I just wanted to say at this point that I think presentation and packaging is very important in gift giving. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. I think you can see in this example here, this is all we did. We made a little envelope, origami, pouch thing, whatever you want to call it. And then you make it special by adding stuff inside, of course, and also decorating the actual thing. So, of course, I mean, what a difference this makes, right? And also this, the presentation is everything. So those are my three easy last minute DIY gift ideas. Some will take longer than others. This one is the quickest to make, and then this one, and then this one here. My favorite out of all of them, of course, is this. I think it's just the box and the gold and everything. And then followed by this one, and then this one. So, of course, the more important the person in your life, perhaps the more you want to give, and the more special you want to make it. This here is a little something for a colleague or a teacher. I think this is a really nice teacher's gift at the end of the year or for Christmas or for your hairdresser, your beauty therapist, your dentist, whatever. Okay, just a nice little thing. Thank you for looking after me. Perhaps you wouldn't use that voice. Please let me know in the comments down below which one of these is your favorite one. And let me know in general what you think of these gift ideas. I hope you like them, I really do. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.